Back to basics, how to mentally handle being on the wrong side of a trade. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at DXP Realty, aka The Trade Agent, and this is a back to basics series called How to Mentally Handle Being on the Wrong Side of a Trade. I wanted to get into that because I think personally, if you have been trading for any period of time, you're going to realize that at some point, you cannot always beat the markets. I always tell people this, and it's the very same thing Livermore would say. You know, you can beat one of the races or you can beat the market near term, but you cannot always beat the market overall. As a probability-based game, ultimately you're trying to do what you think is the best thing at the moment. And you can't fault yourself too heavy for trying to be correct. It's just ultimately it comes down to the mindset of how to get out of a loss, stop a loss, or just get yourself positioned for what you expect to come. And so that's what I want to talk about today. And let's get into it. So we've all talked about how the SPY ultimately has been getting beaten down here, right back to the lows. And you have one gap, two gap, three gap. Is it a three gap trap? I potentially think you're going to double bottom here near term, maybe chop around into October, maybe five, seven percent rise like Sonny and some of us, some of the folks on the Discord room have said, which again, you do the math on that. Half of 365, you know, if you said 36, you know, half of, you know, 10% is 5%. So do the math, half of 36, take you up roughly 18 points, somewhere in the 380s, maybe back to here. Anyway, point being, whether this is about to bounce or not, how do you handle what the next trade is and what you're going to do? Unfortunately, I was out of town for a couple days because of family commitments and I'm going to be pretty busy next week and I've told folks, you know, any bounce, I'm probably going to go to cash on some things that I'm down on and get to more of a neutral position. Now, a lot of people say, well, well, Dan, isn't the point of the market is to trade? Absolutely. You know, we're in a bear market, trader's market. The hardest thing that I always tell people is when you are somehow not positioned correctly or you're off, the best thing to do is to get back to neutral. And when I say get back to neutral, if that means take 100%, go to 100% cash, mitigate losses the best you can, deal with the circumstances that you have. Sometimes going 100% to cash or you know, what, mitigating the risk beyond what is, is creating the uncomfortableness. Like for me, because I know I'm uncomfortable right now. You know, I thought we were going to bounce in here. We didn't. Right? We didn't. We bounced very minimally. And then what? Took out the lows. I mean, even had some positions from in here. I mean, that's just a bad positioning, right? And so some stops got hit. Some stuff I let go because I was an idiot because I was on vacation and hoped, it, and again, hope, I, this, this word hope, it always finds itself being detrimental to your trading probability potential. Because if you're hoping something's going to do something and it doesn't, now you're in a pickle when it, when your hope isn't, you know, hit, you know, you maybe your belief in a higher entity to save you and prayer. It, I've seen this a lot. I don't think whatever the higher entity that is doesn't care about traders doesn't really care, answer prayers for money, he answers prayers for maybe other things in life. But point being, let's not regress. You have to know, all right, we're at the lows. It has to hold. Expect a bounce. If it doesn't bounce, I mean, you've got to be out. I mean, this is the thing we talked about within the market. Leg one down, ah, oh, it's just a pullback. Leg two, it's just a correction. Leg three could turn into the wipeout and be the end of the bear market. Or this could be a prolonged bear market. And again, in my opinion, I tend to believe this is going to be a prolonged one because we've had a long bull market. And I don't think the Fed's raising to 4.5% by next year, that doesn't really stop inflation in my mind. I think there'll be a point of deflation near term because they have raised so quickly. Oil and gas prices have fallen. But could that be beneficial to the market? Would the market like to see interest rates drop? I think so. If you go look at the, the way that the interest rates and the TL... Um, Spy have followed. They almost in parity this year. They look very similar. Let me show you. Pull up the TLT real quick. Since the highs in November, 
They look very similar. So I know the bond market has taken out new lows. And so that becomes your biggest question mark right now. Does the SPY bounce back or is the SPY going to take out the new lows? Well, let's keep an eye on what happens here next couple of days with the bond market because it feels like it's compressing. The action's getting tight. It seems to be green. Natural gas prices, oil prices have come down. Commodity prices have come down. Let's see what happens. Now, again, that to me could be a, just a temporary rise. Maybe the TLT trade is temporary. Again, I'm going to take everything off. I mean, as much as I love the TLT, thinking that it could repeat 2008, I'm just going to sit here and go, you know what? Why don't we regroup? And again, that might be the best trade, and I might miss it. I don't know. But I always tell people, like, you have to have, like, this abundance mindset. Not the FOMO, not the belief that this trade has to be the trade. This trade has to be, you know, the only one out there. Because that's what gets you in trouble. A lot of people who have great experiences in trading realize, like, all it takes is one belief in a trade that doesn't work, that you over leverage and you ride out, it will blow up your confidence, it'll blow up your account balance, it'll blow up all the work you've done for however amount long a period you've been trading. And the goal is to just not ever get to that point. And that's what I'm trying to warn people here. This is why, you know, how to mitigate, you know, losses ultimately becomes one of those games where if you are one of these people that just is an all or nothing kind of mindset where you have to be right, all it takes is one time. To be wrong so how do we handle being on the wrong side of the trade well let's dig deeper into that the first step is you know when they say you're digging your own grave to put the shovel down stop digging well for me that's usually go to cash just go to cash and just stop now do i need to take a couple days off from trading or another probably because again i think the but the, the the most important thing you have to think of if you go to cash right now you're going to be tempted to do what Maybe just jump back into things. And that's where FOMO, and maybe the market does bounce. And, it, you know, you take it off and it goes a little higher and whatever. I mean, there's a million things that could potentially happen. But that feeling that you have to do something can be very detrimental. Because what I'm going to say is you should go to cash. And if you feel like you have to trade, size down. Like, size down immediately. Like, say you were trading 10 options, now you're going just to one. You are just trying to see if like you can get to the market confirming the direction that you think it's going to go. Because again, we have opinions. We have insights based on logic and high probabilities. But when the VIX spikes and the market acts irrational, it doesn't matter, y'all. It just doesn't matter. Because the market can do what it's going to do. And this is where the humility of, all right, I'm wrong, right? And again, if you're right, congratulations. Like There's some people in the room and people following, like, hey, if you're trading well and you're correct like this isn't like i'm not telling you you need to cover your shorts you need to do anything like you do what you're doing if it's correct i'm trying to explain to like who are following me or just to see how i mentally take my breaks how i step back how i unwind from a position because again i might win eight nine ten out of times it's the one out of ten it's the two out of ten that i gotta make sure that what don't put me in a pickle don't put me in a position where i'm now back to where i was a month ago, six months ago, a year ago, whatever. Ideally, as I talk about, always take money out of the market. When you're winning, you're constantly taking money out. Again, you have to earn your account balance increase. I say this all the time. A lot of people just continue to grow their account balance. And then one bad series of trades, or one miscalculation with the market direction, one miscalculation with earnings, who knows what it could be. A company comes out and warns, guides. All of a sudden, you built an account, say, from ten to twenty, thirty thousand $30,000. You took nothing out, and then you give it all back. That is not the goal here. You have to think about that. And that's why we're running this like a business is one of the most important things out there. And and again, well, this is all stuff that I hopefully, if you're following and preach this constantly, just the thought process behind it. But as of right now, so if the first step is to go to cash, step two would be to size down if you feel like you need to trade. I personally will just probably do nothing. Because I know just like when Livermore was in his rut, the best thing he did was do what? To wait. To wait and identify the best setups. Because there might be a great setup now, but there might be a better one actually later. And and that's where, let's talk about it. Like, you know, I, I take the notes. Like, wait, 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 wait. Well, what possibly could be on our radar? We talked about gold, right? What did we say? I'll say it again. 
for people who are newer. I've said this for months. This pop and failure was dangerous. Because if the feds are going to raise interest rates, the anticipation is that there's going to be some sort of deflation. But people don't realize like higher interest rates actually make borrowing more expensive. It can actually create inflation at times. I mean, think about it. The best gold runs of when rates have been rate rising. People don't realize that. Some of the best gold runs have been when interest rates are rising. Right? The cost of doing business, the cost of building, cost of borrowing goes up. Now, I know, again, you can get inflation from low rates and high rates, right? Like, that's not, you know, that's not the question. It's just a matter of how slow the money supply is, right, within the economy. Well, at a certain point, right, like, inflation comes because of there's lack of inventory, lack of investment. Well, if commodity bull market, which we think is popping, gold to me seems very interesting. I've said this for a while. I thought everybody who bought up here the last two years was going to have to get wiped out before the bottom is in. And then I said, well, watch what happens here. Maybe we channel down. And what's the last move of the channel? A wipeout, right? A wipeout. Hmm, I'm not sure. Yeah, you don't know, Alexa. So if you're looking at it and you're going, hmm, well, if you go to cash, for me personally, it's like, all right, I'm putting gold back on the radar, right? Because if I go look at um, the monthly, it's getting pretty interesting here, right? Zoom out. We talk about cup and handle, 0 0.382. I said the 50 month would be a great buy. Okay, well, maybe it gets down a little. Maybe it's got 50 more dollars to drop. Maybe it needs to get back to this major fib, 50% fib and support zone, right? This thing goes back a ways. Look at this level here, y'all. 149, 148. Like, maybe that's the trade you wait for, right? You know, it. it you know, and this is the thing people are like, always love to criticize. And it's like, wait, wait, wait. Sometimes you're early. Hey, we talked about solar being a great short. We talked about oil and gas being selling it. We talked about a lot of things that have worked out. And all it takes, and that's hopefully people have confidence, like in the belief that whether you just trust in me only, please don't. Trust in yourself and review what we've talked about because there's always another great trade coming. And maybe the next short on oil and gas on a hurricane pop, maybe that's the next best trade near term. There's a lot of things going on out there since if you follow the channel, we talk about this stuff. So, I'm just spitballing gold right now. Maybe that's the next trade, right? Silver, maybe that's the next trade, right? Like it has to get wiped down into the 16s, right? We're talking about the VIX capitulating. Well, maybe that's what takes the market down at some point, gold, silver, all this stuff, and the feds do what? Have to start thinking about pivoting. Because we've talked about oil, right? Talked about probably getting down into $60 a barrel. Well, here you go. Oil capitulation might be starting, or it could be bouncing right before a hurricane, and boom. Things are going to get really interesting, and this is where you have to understand the volatility, and this is where this belief in abundance, willing to stop out, willing to size down, and wait. Think of, again, again if you, people who follow, please listen to Livermore work. He talked about when he wanted to get out of the hole, he waited for the best setup. He didn't just start throwing darts at everything. He said, you know what, to get my confidence back and to reinforce what the disciplines and structures that we try to do and wait for levels, let the evidence come in our favor. Because again, every once in a while, and again, I am not immune to this. I tell people like I've been doing this 20 years and I am still a student of my own mind because how did I get myself into pickles is how I get myself out of them too. Like I have to be available mentally and be thoughtful. So if you think about it, okay, maybe gold, maybe oil short, maybe the market's due to bounce. We've said this, like you're right at the range lows. And then, but then you go look at the monthly, right? Well, I've said this is a bear market. It's probably going lower. You just don't know if it's about to turn into a wipeout. Maybe the short is on a bounce, right? There's a lot of things that could be culminating here near term. And, and I've said this, you know, a thousand times, like you have to be prepared because a lot of people will say, well, Dan, you're wrong. You've been wrong on this trade. Hey, guess what? You're only as good as your last trade, and your account balance reflects that too. And that's where I always tell people, like, you got to be very cognitive of your ability to blow yourself up and also make your own money back. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can be wrong, take an L, and then go, all right, I don't need, you know, say you had $100,000 in account and you lose 20 grand in a bad scenario or trading setup. Well, guess what? That's not the end of the world. Like you're not at $1,000 or 500 where you're trying to scrape it back. You know, like having capital gives you the ability to do things. And that might be the next setup in your mind is going, what do I do next? 
And again, you get a little more cautious. Cautious can be good, but we gotta be evidence-based. And so here's where, again, I think you're due for a bounce. Probably takes you into the 380s. And this thing got down pretty quick. And if it is what we think it could be, I personally think it might be like this right before the election. Because I think there, if there is a red wave, maybe the market likes it, maybe Putin. I mean, again, there's so many factors here, y'all. This is why this is so difficult. And anyone going, oh, market's easy. It's always going down. I'm telling you, it's not always like that. In a bear market, it's a trader's market. And if we get into this chop cycle, getting into October, I wouldn't be surprised. I also wouldn't be surprised if a dead cat bounce. Then we turn into the slammer, dam jammer, lower. The only thing that kind of you have to be thoughtful of is, what can come out of nowhere? So being bullish, being bearish, you have to be thoughtful of what? More you're up, less you own. Be thoughtful of, hey, this comes slamming down. You got to think it might be due to bounce. Now, if everyone's calling for a housing crisis, like 2008, 2009, wipeout, remember, 0% down, markets were in a different position there. The banks weren't as leveraged. We're in a times where I think ultimately inflation is the key here to get more of a smash. It feels more like the 1970s where you're probably going to be extremely volatile up and down and then inflation ultimately takes the market higher because companies will be able to pass on inflation. It anchors in, you know, like wages will go up, right? Everything will rise in price. I think that's what the Fed's goal here is to, you know, basically monetize the debt, but it's going to be extremely volatile. And I mean, I think, I hope people realize that. Now, how much lower could the SPY go? I mean, I've thought this for, you know, months i mean i would not be surprised if there's a two handle on the spy so if you have any questions again like think about your own processes you are not immune and i want people like you're not alone if you feel like sometimes you're wrong and you just can't get out of a rut market's doing things to you that just it feels like you you have to hold on and you're almost there and it's the right time i'm just warning you right now there's gonna be times like livermore said you can beat the markets consistently, but you can't always beat the market. Meaning we can't always know what the best trade setup is gonna be and how to always be correct. No one is always correct. You have to be very comforting and nice to yourself, essentially. You know, don't beat yourself up for being wrong because even the best institutions, the best traders, the best hedge funds, whatever, they will lose. And if you can't handle losing and you don't know how to like get out of this rut, then that's the thing. Like, that's why I want you to sit size down, go to cash, and just wait. And what's going to be great about if you're in the Discord room or posting, let's let's all try to wait for the best setups, you know? And if you're short and you, if the market breaks below, good, you got a great setup, you know? I'm not going to sit there and go and chase the action, right? Like that's never the goal here is to chase because I've seen... Just as easily as you, if you chase up, you get wiped down, you chase down, you might get bounced up. It, it happens a lot, friends. It happens a lot. So that's where the more you're up, less you own. And keep in mind, if you are ultimately short the market, right? The last leg down should be the whoosh. Is that going to happen now? I don't know. But also keep in mind what was shorting, right? There's a limited downside. You have to be very careful shorting. It has to be very tactical. It has to be very thoughtful, right? You got to be level-based. And you have to be always on red alert because there is only so much you can go down, right? Like that's the thing. And again, Livermore would say, you know, d just because I'm sh down doesn't mean it can't be short. You know, again, I, I mean, I personally will never short penny stocks and stuff under five, ten dollars. I don't really think it's it really makes sense. But if you look at the spy, and you do go back to the monthly, right? Or sorry, this is the IWM. Let me pull up the spy. We're back coming into what? The 2020 highs. This zone here, I, I don't know if it needs to break it immediately. You've got this trend here from the old uptrend. Now I know it got violated. There's a lot going on here. Just again, if you are short, you are winning. Take profits as you go, as it goes lower, expect bounces. If you are bullish in certain circumstances and like me, you gotta take the losses. Don't just jump back into short, okay? If you're anticipating a pop, great. Watch the levels. If the levels break, you got to go. Now, could it rally right back after? Always. And that's where it gets, this is where mentally the game is the game. 
It just never ends. It's gonna freaking mess with you, okay? So please be safe, be thoughtful, and always think about how to preserve yourself. If you're worried about making money all the time and you have to do things and you have to pretend that you can't lose and you gotta make money and this is the job, this is why I always tell people, like full-time traders, that is the psychological warfare that you're always thinking, like I have to make money, I have to pay the bills, I have to, no, I'm trying to teach people how to like play this game with a more laid back mindset. Again, if you have questions, DM me. Hopefully this helps. I know people are struggling and some people are winning. And again, people are winning. Congratulations. If you're doing things well and you're shorting in certain circumstances and have made tremendous amounts of money, just don't get complacent, right? Just don't ever feel like you can't lose. Watch the levels and we'll talk to you later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.